Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. We welcome you to, to the line. We welcome you um, to this ministry and uh, we're excited about the word today uh, for our Sunday School. If you will, turn uh, your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36, and we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 32. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. Lord, you're an awesome and wonderful and marvelous God. We praise you because of who you are. You're God and you're God all by yourself. You're the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. You are a God that's so awesome and great that no matter what we're going through, you are always there with us. You promised us in your word that if our mother and father forsake us, that you would be right there with us. And so, Lord, we thank you. And then, Lord, you made a promise where two or three are gathered in your name that you said you would be in the midst of us. And Lord, we just thank you right now because we know that your presence is here over this technology called the internet and Facebook and conference calls and all of that, God. We know that your presence is here. So Lord, we just ask you to, 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 to just touch right now. We plead your blood over everyone on this conference call. We plead your blood over the technology, Lord. We plead your blood over everybody that's going to listen to this recording at a later time. And Lord, we just ask you right now by the power of your Holy Spirit that your presence show up in all the places where this message is going out, Lord. Right now in the name of Jesus, we call on your Holy Spirit to just engulf us, to, to fill us, to anoint us afresh, to... Just show forth your presence right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. And then, Lord, we just thank you right now that as we get ready to study this word, as we get ready to, 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 to give out this word, Lord, that let us not just be hearers of your word, but let us be doers of your word. We thank you for this, oh God, and we give you all the praise. Encourage somebody today with this word, Lord. Strengthen somebody today with this word, Lord. And Lord, if there's somebody that is listening to this word that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, the Heavenly Father, we ask you right now to save their souls. Fill them up, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, and we praise you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome again, everyone, to, to this Sunday School lesson. Like I said, it comes from Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 through 32. Ezekiel chapter 26, verses 32 through 22, I mean, 22 to 32, excuse me. Uh, this, is, this is a passage of scripture that when people go to the book of Ezekiel, they usually go to the 37th chapter, which is the, the dry bones chapter. So this is the chapter right before the dry bones chapter. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start reading out of a New King James Version of the Bible. And we're going to start at verse 22. And it reads as follows. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God. I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations 
and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness, from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will keep my judgment and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your father. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all of your uncleanliness. I will call for the grain and multiply it, and bring no famine among you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and the increase of your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good and you will loathe yourself in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. Not for your sake do I do this, says the Lord. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and confound for your own ways, O house of Israel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That is the reading of the word from Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 22 through 32. Um, the title of today's lesson is A Spirit-Filled Heart. A Spirit-Filled Heart. Oh, hallelujah. And so our key verse comes from verse 26, and it says, A new heart also will I give you, a new spirit I will put in you. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. The key concept that we want to gather from this lesson is when God saves us, he fills us with his spirit and gives us a new heart. Glory, hallelujah. Oh man, that, that is just so awesome. When God saves us, he fills us. He fills us with his Holy Spirit and gives us a new heart. Now, our keys for kids, I like to give keys for kids to make the lesson so, so simple and straightforward. The keys for kids are this. God takes away the heart, unloving heart for those who trust in him. That's number one. Number two, God fills us with his spirit and helps us to obey him. And then number three, God's spirit helps us to love others. Hallelujah. And so our lesson aim for today, our lesson aim is to summarize Ezekiel's message of hope for the exiles in Babylon. The biblical principle that we want to get from this lesson is to show that God God's blessings are not because we are righteous or entitled to them. But his blessings, I'm just going to say it right now, is for his name's sake. He, he desires to bless us for his name's sake. He desires to bless us because he loves us. Hallelujah. And then the daily application that we want to take away from this lesson is to intentionally exemplify the presence of God's indwelling spirit in, in our lives each and every day. Oh, hallelujah. Um, this lesson, we're going to break down into three different sections. And um, for the first section, we're going to deal with 
for his name's sake. Uh, that's verses 22 to 24. Then we're going to deal with spiritual and physical res, uh, restoration. That's verses 25 to 30. And then the last part of the lesson is remember and, and repent. Remember and repent. Oh, hallelujah. So that's, that's, that's how we're going to deal with this lesson. Now, let, let's talk about the background of this lesson. Ezekiel uh, prophesied from Babylon where he had been taken captive along with the kings of Judah and 10,000 other folks around uh, 597 B.C. In the fifth year of his captivity, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel and, he ministered, and his prophetic ministry began. Ezekiel was a contemporary of the prophet uh, uh, Jeremiah. And both prophesied the end of, of the nation Judah. Jerusalem, they said, would be destroyed and the temple would be defiled. Jeremiah preached this message in Jerusalem where he was in danger of being executed for treason. But, but, but Jeremiah persists and even wrote a letter to the exiles in Babylon telling them to prepare for a lengthy captivity. Ezekiel. He came back and echoed that same message while in Babylon. As a captive himself, he encouraged the, fed, the fellow Israelites not to believe the false rumors of an early return from exile. And so when you look at the book of Ezekiel, the first 30 chapters of the book that bear his name, predicted the, the, the dire consequences of the sins of Judah and then the surrounding nations. It's always some words in there that just just like, okay, the nation's going to suffer from all that they have done and said against uh, uh, Judah, and then Judah themselves are going to suffer because of the things that they have done against God. Words came to the prophecy, uh, uh, words came of the prophecy fulfillment. Jerusalem had indeed failed. And from that point on, the prophet's tone became soft, more comforting. He provided a foundation for faith and hope. Though the city had failed, God had not forgotten his people. Relief would come. During the exile, there was a godly remnant that remind, remain true to the Lord. But in general, the Jews intended, Jews tended to forget their call as the people of God. And so with this lesson, with that kind of background, we must realize that uh, God always has a remnant. I don't know, we may be the remnant now, in God's eye, those of us who who believe, who who trust in God, who hope in, in an awesome and prosperous future, even in the midst of of living in a nation that is going through all kind of stuff, even here in America, and 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 so we who know the Lord, we must proclaim how good He is to us, and we must proclaim to all the people of all the nations in all the world that we serve an awesome and mighty God. And when we do that, we can be, we can rest assured that the God that we serve, he's going to be right there. He, as, the, as the old folks used to say, and I guess I'm part of that old folks gang now myself, he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. And that's the God that we serve, a God that knows what we're going through. And when he comes in to take care of us, to watch over us, to keep us, he's not just doing that because we have been righteous or because we have been good, but, but, but many times he's just doing it because we are his children and he wants to make sure that, that we're, he, he's going to do it for his name's sake. I, 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 I'm going to put it this way so you understand. Uh, coming up in the neighborhood, I'm, I am a McCoy. And, and coming up in the neighborhood, the McCoys had a, 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 a name, 
a, a, a reputation and, and we had to act a certain way. We had to be a certain way. We had to be a people about our word. We weren't a people who went around stealing and mistreating people because we were McCoys. And, 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 and I remember times where I would do something wrong and disrespect an elder and my father would, would come in and, and, and just say, look here, boy, you my son. You don't disrespect nobody, whether they're poor, whether they, they got other sins or proclivities like alcohol, or homosexuality, anything like that. You don't disrespect an adult. You are a McCoy. And, and, and you must treat people right. And I can remember those times where where I, I faulted as and where I where I didn't act right. And it would always seem like Daddy would find out, <laughs> and he would pull me to the side and tell me how I had to act right. And 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 and, and he and he did this because he wanted his name to be a name that was appreciated throughout the community. And that's how God is. That's how God is. And so our first point for today is that uh, uh, this is for his name's sake. Listen to the text. Listen to the text, verse 22 through 24. And we're going to read it out of the New Living Translation. Therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I will bring you back but not because you deserve it. I am doing this to protect my holy name on which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. I will show you how holy my great name is, the name on which you brought shame among the nations. And when I reveal my holiness through you before their eyes, says the Lord, the sovereign Lord, then the nations will know that I am the Lord. For I will gather you up from all the nations and bring you home again to your land. Oh, hallelujah. This, this text in Ezekiel, it has some literal context and then it has some figurative context. The literal is, is that God did bring the children of Israel out of uh, Babylon, brought them out of captivity doing uh, later on. But, but, but it's also a, a figurative uh, illustration of what God is going to do when he brings us all home out of our, our pilgrimage here on earth where we will be in the land flowing with milk and honey up in heaven with him, walking the golden streets. And all the nations who 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 who, who claim and, and came against God will know that 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 God is God. And he's gonna do this for his name's sake. And so for 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 Ezekiel making this prophecy now, he's telling the children of Israel, look, when God brings us out of our captivity, he's going to do this not because we deserve it. That's what God said. He ain't doing it because you deserve it. He's doing it because he's going to protect his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. God's grace and his mercy is amazing. His grace is, 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 is so awesome. He, he, his mercy is so wonderful. He, he does things because he loves us. And because he is a loving and wonderful God. I, I love the 23rd Psalm. And I, I want to turn back to the 23rd Psalm for just a minute. Because that, that's what comes up in my spirit when I, when I see this. Um, um, and I want to make sure I read it right. I ain't going to my, my, just trust my memory. But in the 23rd Psalm, he says this. He says, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. As he said, go back. He restores my soul and leads me in the path of righteousness 
for his name's sake. That's the kind of God we serve. He's going to make sure that we are led in a path of righteousness. He's going to make sure that we are restored. Well, that means if we've been restored, that means we messed up somewhere along the line. We have fallen and, and God will restore us and lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And that's what he promised the children of Israel. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to lead you in a path of righteousness for my name's sake. Because I can't have the other nations going around uh, uh, disrespecting my reputation. Oh, hallelujah. We are ambassadors for God. We are representatives of God. And, and, and when God blesses us, it is our job to be a blessing to others. Oh, hallelujah. He did it for his name's sake. Oh, hallelujah. For his own reputation. He, 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 he wants to deliver the children of Israel in spite of, of their behavior in spite of the fact that they were idolaters, in spite of the fact that they did not trust him and did not obey him. God wanted to bless them, not secretly, but he was going to bless them publicly. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. You, you, you done went through some shame. You done went through some difficult times. You done went through some sins and temptations and you've fallen. And, and, and people have, have been talking about you. I thought she and he was a child of God. And look how they didn't fail. Look how what. But God is not going to just bless you and restore you secretly. He's going to restore you publicly. So all of those who spoke up, spoke up against you and spoke up against God will be put to shame. Oh, the word of God in Isaiah says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And, and every word that, that has been spoken against you, those who did it will be put to shame. Oh, hallelujah. God's going to do it for his name's sake. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But not only is he going to, to, to do this for his name's sake, because he's a holy God, he's a glorious God and a mighty God, as he does this, as he restores us, and, and as he leads us in the path of righteousness, he's going to have, give us a spiritual restoration and also a physical restoration. Many times in the church, we tell people they can't come to Christ until they cleaned up. That's a, so unfortunate because you can't clean up until you come to Christ. That, that's, how, that's how the cleansing happens. I, I think of uh, 1 John 1, 9, it says, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you and then cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So we in the church, we must have grace for those who have went through hard times, who have fallen short of the glory of God, have missed the mark, and we are to be there ready to, to help them be restored, not shun them. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So let's look at this second section, spiritual restoration and, and physical restoration. Listen to verses 25 through 30. And it says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take away your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. 
and you will live in Israel, the land I gave your ancestors long ago. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will cleanse you of your filthy behavior. I will give you good crops of grain. I will send no more famine on the land. I will give you great harvest from your fruit trees and fields and never again will the surrounding nations be able to score, scoff at you at, at your land for its famine. Oh, hallelujah. God, first of all, wants to physically, I mean spiritually, restore us. And the spiritual restoration must occur in our hearts. Many have hearts of stone. Hard-hearted, stubborn, hard-headed people who won't believe and trust in the word of God. I came across a young man last week and I've been praying diligently for him. This young man went to jail, went to prison at the age of 26 and did not get out till he was 46 years old, spent 20 years in the state prison. When he got out, month after he got out, unfortunately, the only person that loved him and cared for him was his mother died. And then after she died, he just took a tailspin and just, just went back off into drugs and stealing and all of that kind of stuff. Then he shows back up. Four months after getting out of prison, he shows back up in the jail. And he comes crying at the, at the jail service. And I sat down and I listened to him. He told me the story. And I prayed for him. And as I was praying, I was remembering like, okay, God, God was placing on my heart. You just pray for him to have relief right now and healing because he's still dealing with uh, the withdrawals of being on crack cocaine. And after I got through praying for him to, to be healed and, and all of that, I talked to him for a little bit. And I asked him a question. I said, in your 20 years in prison, did you talk to God? Do you know the Lord's prayer? And at that point, the young man said, no, nah, man, I, that ain't what I did while I was in prison. I said, man, look where it got you. Look where your hard heart, your stony heart got you. You got to trust in God, man. You need to learn the Lord's prayer. You need to learn how to pray to God and have a relationship with him. And I pointed him to another young man to help him to learn the Lord's Prayer and to start praying with the other brothers in the jail. God wants to give all of us a new heart. A heart that he's going to sprinkle, this text says, with water and cleanse it. Water represents the word of God. It has the ability to clean and to soften a hard and stubborn heart. We have to study God's word. We have to know God's word for ourselves. In order that, that, and when, that it will wash our minds of the filth of this world. Wash our hearts of the filth of this world. Help us to understand that we serve an awesome and mighty God and that he's willing that if we just come confessing our sins, he will cleanse us. Wash us clean of all of our filthy ways and all of our adulterous ways. Too many people are walking around chasing idols. 
They idolaters. They serve money. They serve drugs. They serve their sexual proclivities. All of that stuff. Instead of serving the living God. But I can come testifying today. That if you come to God. And listen to his word. And pray to him. Oh, he'll clean your heart. You got to come confessing and repenting. He'll give you a new heart. Oh, Lord. And I love how this text says he'll give us a tender and responsive heart. He'll put his spirit in us. Oh, hallelujah. And his Holy Spirit will lead God and direct us. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. That, 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 that taught me, that, that gave me the faith to call upon your name. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that convicted me, that helped me to call on the name of the Lord. So many of us, so many people in the world, when they hear the word of God and it convicts them, and they begin to cry and feel remorse and all of that. Don't repent. Because they just feel so much sorrow and shame. But you can't get to the joy of the Lord. Until you have walked through the water of conviction. Shame and sorrow. You got to get there. Because godly sorrow brings about repentance. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so, God says to the children of Israel, I'm going to give you a heart, a new spiritual heart. He's talking to the whole entire nation. He wants the whole nation to have a new spiritual heart. Oh, I don't mean to be political. But I have to say this about America right now. Lord, we need a clean heart. We need to be renewed in the right spirit. There's so much division going on in America right now. We need a clean heart. Oh, Lord, clean our hearts. Clean our spirits, Lord. Let your word penetrate us. That we won't have these stony and stubborn hearts, but we'll have a tender and responsive heart, a heart of flesh. The word says over in 2 Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, pray, and turn from their wicked way, he says, I'll hear from heaven and I will heal their land. And that's what God promised the children of Israel here in this text. He says in, in Ezekiel, look, not only am I going to restore you, you spiritually, I'm going to restore you physically. I'm going to let your land be healed. I'm going to give you the land that I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when I give you back your land, I'm going to keep cleansing you of all of your filthy behavior. And then I'm going to give you crops of grain and, and there'll be no more famine on the land. And I'll give you a great harvest for the fruit, your, your fruits and your fields. And, and, and all those nations that scorned you, they, they're going to be put to shame. We've been going through earthquakes in Mexico, hurricanes, and all the islands and the Gulf, the, the, the coastal parts. We're going through uh, 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 forest fires up, up on the northwest side of the United States. We need a healing in the land. We need some physical restoration. The only way we'll get that, we must start with spiritual restoration. We must call on the name of the Lord and confess our sins 
and let him know that he is God and God all by himself. Our last point for today is remembering and repent. Remembrance and repentance. Listen to the text. He says, then, verse 31, then when you remember your past sins and despise yourself of all the detestable things you did, but remember, says the sovereign Lord, I am not doing this because you deserve it. Oh, my people of Israel, you should be utterly ashamed of all you have done. After God's spiritual and physical uh, restoration of Israel, they will remember their past sins. And unfortunately, they will hate themselves. But he wants them to do it and repent. Many times, the devil comes and attacks us with our past sins. And, and it makes us ashamed and it hurts us. But we cannot stay there. Even then, when they come back into our hearts, we got to repent and say, Lord, please forgive me. And confess it and go on. Because that's what God wants us to do. The Lord made sure that Israel knew that their goodness is not why he blessed them. God's goodness leads to repentance is what this is saying. God is God. And he's an awesome and sovereign God. And he blesses us. And he bestows upon all of us irregardless of our behavior. He's, he's so gracious and compassionate and full of love. It rains, you understand, on the just and the unjust. That's his grace. And we should never take it for granted. All the blessings he gives us is not because of our good works and not because we are good people, but it's called because of God's amazing grace. It is easy for us to get so proud of our accomplishments and our and our behavior if, if they if, if, if they if that's why we receive so much favor from God. But that's not why. The truth of the matter is, no matter how many good deeds we do, we still need God's grace. To think otherwise is an exercise in self-righteousness. And I must tell us, all of our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. So we should evaluate ourselves. Repent of our wrongdoings. And as we repenting of our wrongdoings, we got to give God some praise. We got to give God some thanks. We got to lift up his holy name. He alone is worthy of the honor. He alone is worthy of the glory. He alone is the one who saved us. He alone is the one. I have to testify myself. He picked me up even when he had to reach way down. He picked me up and placed my feet on solid ground. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is like sinking saying, and I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, because his grace is amazing, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a new heart, given us your Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. As we conclude this lesson, let me give you some thoughts to ponder. 
We should always be mindful that we are God's ambassadors to the world. Some, sometimes we're the only Bible that other people will ever read. Your life, my life. Number two, God uses change for our own good and promises a new heart and a new spirit for his people. Number three, it is by God's grace and mercy alone that we have what he has lent to us. Oh, hallelujah. And then number four, never forget where God has brought you from. I've been in the pit and I know he's picked me up out of the pit and I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll always remember. Oh, hallelujah. I'll always remember how he picked me up and turned me around. I'll always remember. When we believe and trust in Jesus, God promises to give us a new heart and his Holy Spirit to help us obey him and follow him. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, please forgive us and fill us with your spirit. Thank you for changing our hearts and helping us to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thought to remember, for hearts to be changed, they must be receptive to change. For hearts to be changed, they must be receptive to change. Hallelujah. Before we end this broadcast, we always like to pray the prayer of salvation. This prayer is based on Romans 9 and I mean Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 and, and verse uh, 13. And verse 13 simply says, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray the prayer. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, into my heart. I invite you to become the Lord of my life to rule in the reign in my heart from this day forward. I submit to you, Lord. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart. You are now saved. You have a new heart. Holy Spirit is now in you, leading, guiding, directing you. And we praise God for it. We're going to go, go off of Facebook right now and we'll be on the conference call. If you want to call in and discuss the lesson a little bit more with us, have comments or questions, you can call 910-218-0531. 0531. Facebook, you be blessed, and may God keep you and watch over you.